Hey internet friends, I've returned but can't bring myself to talk about internet censorship. And I'm so tired of the election that I can't even think about talking about it right now. Listen, this kind of fatigue happens to the best of us. Perhaps my fatigue is exacerbated by the fact that I'm nine months pregnant, sweating at my desk because Georgia has been sitting at over 80 degrees and 90% humidity in late October and I feel like I'm living in a bowl of soup. A bowl of bat soup. Sorry, was I not supposed to make that joke? Anyway, get your 2020 bingo card out because this year isn't over. And today we're talking about weather modification projects, which were once regarded as mere conspiracy theory. But of course, now they're openly recognized and publicized. Yet the general public has no idea the extent of weather modification that takes place not only by the United States government, but governments worldwide. Let us first define weather modification, which is, on a basic level, the act of intentionally manipulating or altering the weather. Historically, the most common form of weather modification has been cloud seeding, which can serve the purpose of increasing the water supply and presents in the form of rain or snow. On the flip side, a goal of weather modification could be prevention instead of production, preventing hurricanes or storms from happening. And you just wouldn't believe how long folks have been trying to influence the weather. That being said, we're gonna fast forward past the rain dances and go straight to early instances documented in newspapers. In 1905, when San Diego was suffering from drought, the merchants of Los Angeles approached a professional rainmaker and offered him a thousand dollar reward if he could make it rain 18 inches in three months in Southern California. The rainmaker took him up on the bet and he concocted a secret mix of 23 chemicals and large evaporating tanks. And he built rain towers to bring on the downpour. Curiously enough, it rained when the rainmaker said it would and in fact, he did such a good job that he caused flash floods, resulting in millions of dollars in damages. Around that time, folks who claimed they could influence weather were generally regarded as quacks, reserved mostly for circus sideshows. But somewhere along the way, someone identified weather modification as something more than entertainment, more than a good headline. Officially, cloud seeding as we know it was thought to have originated in 1946, when Vincent Schaefer was experimenting with dry ice and quote, noticed that cloud condensation nuclei, the tiny particles around which water condensates, could be artificially produced to create rain and snow. Schaefer put his discovery to the test by seeding the clouds over the Berkshire Mountains in Massachusetts and successfully created precipitation. Eventually, it was discovered that weather could be used as a weapon against the enemy. And here we arrive at Operation Popeye. Operation Popeye was a highly classified weather modification program that took place between 1967 and 1972. It involved a cloud seeding operation during the Vietnam War with the goal of extending Vietnam's monsoon season. Basically, through cloud seeding, Operation Popeye induced and prolonged the rainy season. Pilots would fly over Vietnam towards an active storm cell toting a canister of silver or lead iodide which were, at the time, considered the two primary sources of water condensation nuclei. Or, to simply put it, the two chemicals you needed to cloud seed and make it rain. Once they were in or near the storm cell, the plane crew would ignite these canisters of chemicals and release them into the storm. And once a super scientific KitchenAid mixer action happened, these chemicals would prolong the storm when they mixed with the already present precipitation up in the clouds. What's weird is this practice was completely kept secret from the public. The Nixon administration denied Operation Popeye and lied to Congress, but somehow journalists got a hold of the details and published stories about rain being used as a weapon. Maybe that was back when mainstream journalism was actually a respectable career path. Either way, Operation Popeye was highly classified. Even though taxpayer money was thrown at these efforts to the tune of $3.6 million a year, which would amount to over $20 million a year in today's money. And even though Operation Popeye has since been declassified, its success as a weapon of war has been downplayed, with its effectiveness being dubbed unverifiable. For something whose effectiveness was dubbed unverifiable, there certainly was a lot of fallout for using weather warfare for hostile purposes. In 1978, a new treaty went into effect under the Environmental Modification Convention, 
prohibiting the military or other hostile use of environmental modification techniques as they were found to have widespread, long-lasting, or severe effects. Basically, this convention banned weather warfare like what we saw in Vietnam, but it didn't ban the actual practice of playing God and manipulating the weather for other purposes. In fact, right now as you're watching this, someone somewhere is probably seeding a cloud. But the practice of geoengineering has fallen under heavy criticism in recent years, with the argument being that it's not really about helping the environment, it's about control. Control of people and control of money, because if you control the weather, guess what? You control the food supply. If you can create flood or drought, you can create feast or famine. If this technology falls into the wrong hands, do you think the goal could be having everyone begging and groveling on their knees for relief from the very individuals who created the problem in the first place? Furthermore, there is growing concern over the chemicals being sprayed into the clouds and their long-lasting effects on the human body, animals, and the earth, as those chemicals get absorbed into the ground, our drinking water, and our skin. Finally, what are the ramifications for playing God? What happens when you mess with nature in this way? How does this practice affect our overall climate and does it destabilize our weather systems? And when climate change is such a hot topic, why does the government's use of weather manipulation never seem to make it into the conversation? Instead, the goals of Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030 are implemented across the populace to fight climate change. And these solutions have somehow manifested as population control, living in pods, eating bugs, elimination of private property, and everyone living in smart cities. But no, they never seem to mention how much the government and private corporations mess with the weather. Really, if you simmer down every argument that makes it to the mainstream that climate change pushers are begging for, it's just, it boils down to one thing. They're begging for more government intervention. I mean, how much power does your government actually need over you? And can they use weather to punish you if you don't obey? I suppose in a hypothetical nightmare hellscape, they could send a hurricane your way if your particular state or territory falls out of line. But the thing is, very few around you would believe the government was capable of such a thing, that they'd actually have the technology or incentive. What's strange is to know all of this and then watch the news do a piece on cloud seeding like it's some kind of new phenomenon in technology. But really, there are hundreds of U.S. patents concerning weather manipulation and cloud seeding dating back to the early 1900s. Out west, where water is a major commodity, cloud seeding is commonplace, and even a way for ski resorts to bolster business, creating more snowfall. There are stories of mining companies in Australia who are using cloud seeding to prevent rainfall in key locations. But by benefiting themselves, they put the larger region at a detriment, drying out rivers, which kills off native animals, causes dust issues, and hey, could even be a contributing factor to those bushfires we heard so much about this year. China is actually super upfront about their manipulation of the weather. For the 2008 Beijing Olympics, they claimed to have used cloud seeding technology to ensure that the event would be rain-free. Back in 2018, China announced it was launching the world's largest weather control machine with the ability to modify the weather in an area similar to the size of Alaska. With the stated goal of increasing rainfall along the Tibetan Plateau to meet the water demands of their population. While China is uncharacteristically upfront about their weather meddling, more than 50 other countries discreetly use the practice of cloud seeding on the regular. Again, I ask, what are the consequences of playing God? Why is the conversation surrounding climate change as manipulated as the weather? What are the long-term effects of the chemicals they're spraying into the clouds and raining down on us? And lastly, can we trust governments worldwide to be upfront, honest, and ethical in their weather endeavors? You tell me, internet friends. You know I always look forward to reading your comments. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and supporting my channel on Patreon. Bye!